Okay, so in this video we're going to look at some common graphs that we might encounter. Okay. Um, just to give us an idea, right? And basically, the principle is you start with the simple examples and you learn how to build up from them to more complicated ones. So common graphs. Well, we have lines, right? So one of the ways you often see lines written, y equals mx plus b, this slope-intercept form, right? Um, So the graph of the line tends to look something like this. Right. Uh, this point here, the B, right, is that y-intercept, right, the place where it crosses the y-axis. Um, M, the slope, rise over run. And again, with, with, with graphs of lines, right, visually you can, you can pretty easily tell a line with positive slope apart from a line with negative slope or, or a line with zero slope, which is just a horizontal line, right? Um, but, but from the graph, you probably can't look at it and read off the exact value for the slope. For that, you're going to have to either get a couple of points, calculate rise over run, or maybe you have the formula handy and you can look at that, right? Um, so we have lines. We have basic quadratic, right? So this is a parabola opening upwards. Vertex at zero, zero. Something like that, okay? We could go to the cubic. The graph of the cubic looks something like this. Starts down here, comes up, flattens out as it goes through the origin, and then it heads up. Okay? With the cubic. Um, and then other power functions, integer power functions, tend to look like variations on these. Um, you could also look at, say, root functions. So we could look at, say, y equals the square root of x. Now, of course, here there's a domain issue, right? This is only defined when x is bigger than or equal to 0. So we can't, uh, we can't plot it for negative x. For, for x bigger than or equal to 0, it looks like this. Uh, in fact, that root function... Is, is just one half of a parabola, but turned on its side, right? And again, this, this is related to this inverse relationship, right? Uh, the square root is, is sort of a partial inverse for the, for the squaring function. And this is one of these places where domain does come in, into play, right? Um, this function here, if you set the domain to be all real numbers, does not have an inverse. Uh, but if you were to restrict this to only x bigger than or equal to 0 for inputs, so you only took this half of the parabola, then this graph and that graph, they would be inverses of each other. Um, we probably won't deal with inverse functions in the review. I think this is something we'll probably leave until we get through a bit of calculus and we want to talk about derivatives for inverse functions. We'll, we'll deal with inverses when we come to them. Okay, so we have some of these basic algebraic functions. Um, I guess maybe one more we could put in here before we move on. It might be this basic hyperbola, y equals 1 over x. Which looks something like this. It has two pieces. Okay. And it has both horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Um, <clears throat> this is sort of a, it's both a good and a bad example. Um, it, it's good in that it has some interesting behavior that you don't encounter with things like power functions. Um, the bad thing about this, this example is that uh, some people will 
if you, if you spend too much time on this, some people will kind of get the impression that whenever you have asymptotes, they're always the axes. This is not always the case, right? Um, a, a horizontal asymptote could be any horizontal line. A vertical asymptote could be any vertical line. Um, when we get to graphs of rational functions, that's something that we're going to encounter. Okay. Uh, other functions that you will encounter in this course? There are the trig functions. Um, maybe I shouldn't try to do all the trig functions. Let's do sine. So sine is this function which oscillates between minus 1 and 1. Um, so this is an interesting property that we don't see with any of the ones over here, right? Um, with all of these graphs, the y value tends to either increase or decrease with the x value. And, and it tends to be that the y value will get arbitrarily large if you go out far enough one way or the other. For a sine function, the y value is always between minus 1 and 1. So you get a curve which just goes back and forth forever. And it repeats itself. Um, What's also interesting, and this is true of all the trigonometric functions, uh, the sine function is what's called periodic. The graph repeats. Uh, once you know the graph from, say, yeah, we could go from minus, well, let's say from, from minus pi all the way to pi. Uh, this is minus pi over 2. That's pi over 2. Uh, once you know that bit of the graph for the sine function, you can just copy-paste to get the graph of the sine function for all other values of x. Um, which again, is not something that you see with any of these over here. Um, and, and so we could get into cosine, tangent, cotangent, we could get into all the, all the trig functions. Um, but we'll, we'll probably deal with that when we, when we go over trigonometry. Um, another one? the exponential function. I'm going to do e to the x, but you can do other bases as well. Okay. So the graph of y equals e to the x looks something like that. Okay. The intercept is 0, 1, right? Because anything to the power is 0 equal to 1. Um, so pretty much, I've done this for base e, but for any base bigger than, bigger than 1, this is what your exponential graph is going to look like. If the base is between 0 and 1, it's going to go the other way. Okay? But it's something which grows very rapidly towards infinity as x gets big and positive, and it slowly decreases towards 0 um, as, you, as you feed in negative values for x. And the last sort of common function whose graph you should know is the natural log. And the natural log is the inverse of the exponential function. And again, if you're doing a log to another base, the graph is going to look the same, uh, just kind of uh, stretched a little bit, stretched or shrunk. Uh, so because of the inverse relationship between these two functions, the y-intercept for the exponential function, we flip the coordinates and we get an x-intercept for the natural log. This horizontal asymptote becomes a vertical asymptote and we get something which looks like that. Okay? And again, the natural log has this domain issue. Uh, it's only defined for positive numbers. It's undefined if x is 0 or negative, so we only get a piece of the graph that looks like that. Um, if, you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to do the absolute value of x, and actually we should throw the absolute value function in there. Um, if you do the natural log of the absolute value of x, then you get sort of a, a mirror image on that side, right? You get that piece, and, and you get that piece. Okay. Um, if we want to just plain old y equals absolute value x, let's squeeze that in right here in the middle. 
uh, the absolute value function has this sort of V shape, right? Um, when x is bigger than 0, it's just the line y equals x, so it's just a straight line going up like that. When x is less than 0, y equals minus x, so it's a line with, with negative slope. Um, you get this V shape. The absolute value is interesting. Um, it's an interesting function. It's, it's kind of the simplest example that most people come up with for a function which is continuous at every point, once we define what it means for a function to be continuous, but does have a point where it does not have a derivative. Right? Um, at the origin, there's no well-defined slope for that function because the slope abruptly changes from minus 1 to plus 1. Okay? Uh, so these are some of your, your common graphs that you're going to encounter uh, throughout the course. In the next video, we'll talk a little bit about how to take some of these basic graphs and um, turn them into things that are slightly more complicated.